the culminating event for the X-35B was something called Mission X. Mission X was designed to be uh, something that would highlight and showcase what the X-35B could do. And that is it could fly supersonic, it can do a short takeoff, and it could do a vertical landing without reconfiguring the airplane, without doing anything different, and do that all in a single tank of gas. Uh, no airplane in history had ever done that before. No one knew who was going to fly Mission X. In fact, I will tell you, all the government pilots expected it, be, it would be one of the Lockheed pilots that flew that thing because usually all of those first flight kind of things are done by the company pilots. So one afternoon, I'm sitting there in the room uh, at Edwards, and uh, the test conductor says, hey, you're on the schedule for tomorrow. Uh, give me another hour, and I'll have the test cards printed, and we can review what you're going to go do. I said, okay. So he called me about an hour later and said, hey, I've got the cards done. Come by my cubicle, and we'll, we'll review everything. So I walked down to the cubicle, and he hands me this card deck. And like always, I start looking at, okay, yeah, here's what we're doing. Here's the thing. Here's who's the chase. And I'm flipping through the cards, looking at, uh, okay. And then, you know, here on page six, it has the, the kind of the overview of the flight, and then it gets into all the details. And I'm looking through the overview of the flight, and it dawns on me that I'm looking at the Mission X profile. And Mission X was a big deal. This was where we were gonna to try to do a short takeoff, level supersonic dash and vertical landing all in the same flight. Never been done before, for at, least, at least as far as the research we had done at that point. And we kind of knew that it was something that the other airplane we were in competition with probably couldn't do. A big deal. Never expected that it was gonna be a government pilot that would get to fly it really never expected that it was going to be me to be that government pilot to fly it. So it dawned, I have this dawning realization as I'm looking at the car, and I look up at him, and he's just got this big smile on his face because he knows. He knew about it. And I said, this is the Mission X profile. And he's like, yeah. I said, they're really going to let me do this? Yeah. I said, oh, my goodness. So we went through the cars and everything. Uh, about 4 or 4.30, uh, we finished up our review. Uh, the brief was going to be really early in the morning the next day. And I knew that I really wanted to go and practice the mission because it was, it was going to be uh, a little bit challenging to really get all those things done on a single tank of gas. So I called down to the folks in Palmdale who ran the simulator that I had developed a really good working relationship over the years that I had been in there doing all of those hours in the sim getting ready for flying. And I said, hey, look, we're doing Mission X tomorrow. I'm the pilot who's going to fly it. I'd really love to come down and get a little bit of practice. Uh, I know I'm not going to be able to get there until, you know, after close of business. Are you guys okay with keeping the facility open for me? I said, yep, Turbo, come on down. Sure, we'll, we'll take care of you. We'll keep the facility open. So I drove down there and went, and those guys stayed with me for a couple hours at night as I went through over and over again just rehearsing the mission so that I could make sure that I was going to execute it well. The next morning, uh, got up, and again, the airplane was sitting outside where it was supposed to be. Uh, we briefed the mission, and as we're walking out, I'm walking alongside the lead government uh, engineer, Andrew Mock, and, we're, and he's going to the control room, and I'm going to get dressed in my flight gear. And he looks over at me, and he says, Turbo, you don't seem your normal, cool, calm, and collected self. What's going on? I said, well, Andrew, man, this is a big deal. This is Mission X. This is like the whole enchilada right here. There's a lot, of, a lot of pressure on. And he looked at me, and he smiled, and he said, yeah, but just remember, they taught monkeys how to fly spaceships. So that kind of helped put the entire, entirety of what was about to happen in perspective for me. For Mission X, I think specifically, I realized the significance of that event. I wasn't thinking too much about the first, uh, the, the historical significance. I was thinking more about the significance for the program. This was a big deal. If this worked and we were able to execute it, this was going to be something that the Lockheed airplane could do that the other airplane could not. All you, all you really focus on was I have to execute the plan. I've got to execute these points, and, and please, dear God, don't let me mess it up. Don't let me be the reason something doesn't go the way it's supposed to. And in the business of getting ready to go fly, you're doing all your checklists and it's, it's all very automatic and routine and you're going through the procedure and then when you close the canopy and you lock the canopy, now you're in, you're, you're in your bubble and you realize, okay, now it's, now it's me 
in the airplane. Yes, I have this entire team out there ready to support, but from this point forward, it's me touching the controls, it's me figuring out what to do with the airplane. All anyone else can do is talk to me and offer words of encouragement or offer ideas and solutions on how to deal with something that comes up. I felt prepared. We had done a lot of simulator training for every one of the flights. I would tell people that if I had to average it out, I bet I spent somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 hours in the simulator for every hour in the cockpit of the X-35. So we felt very well prepared for what we were going to go do. But there was something special about closing, hearing that click as that canopy closed and knew that you're about to start the clock running and we're about to go do this first step, which was the short takeoff, and then everything was just going to flow. The short takeoff, climb up to 25,000 feet, accelerate the supersonic, touch 1.05 Mach. I did pause at that point because we wanted to have everything stabilized. They were collecting data, so they said, hey, we want to take a nice long dwell, about 30 seconds at that point. So in that 30 seconds, I really had nothing to do, just keep pointing the airplane where I was going. Didn't really have anything to manipulate or do. But here I am, 25,000 feet above the dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base, going supersonic as part of this first historical kind of thing ever. And I'm thinking back that a couple of decades prior, Chuck Yeager's above that same lake bed, going supersonic for the first time, a historical event. And I enjoyed that 30 seconds of wow factor. And then it was back to business. <laughs>We went off and executed the flight, and at that point in my career, I could just see the event. I could just see I got to do something very, very cool. Didn't really comprehend the magnitude of it at the time. All I knew was I got to be the person flying Mission X, and that was awesome. When I look back on that now, I really realized that all I did that day was drive the airplane. You didn't see all those other people that really made that event happen. All of the people responsible for the design of the airplane. You didn't see all of the people responsible for assembling that airplane out of pieces and parts. You didn't see the people who worked that night in the hangar getting the airplane ready. You didn't see those folks that took care of me in the simulator the night before making sure that I had all the time I needed to practice. You didn't see the folks that morning who were getting the instrumentation on the airplane ready to go to make sure we'd be able to execute the flight. The 40 or so people that sat in the control room watching everything on their instrumentation that I could not see in the cockpit. The chase pilots that were in the airplanes on either side of me, to making sure that I could concentrate on flying my airplane, they would take care of all the other stuff as we were, we were going around there to keep my workload as low as, as possible. So when I look at it back on that event now, I realize everything in this program, everything that's been done has really been a team event. It has taken a lot of people to overcome the challenges, to do the innovation, to do all those things that have enabled us to get to where we are. Uh, I'm just happy now when I look back on it that I got to be part of that.